Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Up with, again, my very regular but special guest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an honor. So we're in a new tech situation here in Camas. There you go. Because of the uh, fire that you saw in Kirsten's show, we actually have resorted this studio here. And that's, that is actually one of the things we wanted to talk about. So we could go straight into, into that, that actually, you know, we, we have just decided yesterday to rent a movie theater, which we're going to go into, but everything that uh, was going on with Strawberry is in full play and come on out. Uh, more guests are welcome. We've got lots of room for you. Um, we actually have more ideas now because of this whole event. So, yeah, um, yeah. Everything's flowing fully. So yeah, it's all miracles. There's, there's no fire in sight. It's, uh, we're just ready to have a beautiful two and a half months coming up here, finishing this month and then a very full August and then um, our mystery school. And then the beat goes on after that, but uh, it's beautiful. There's the berries are out there in function and uh, it's everything is flowing and flowering out there now. So It's, it's even beautiful. greener than before because we put the sprinklers on the roof for days, so everything's greener and more lush than you yeah. expected. Yeah, That's, it always gets better. We just use everything for mind training and now everything is uh, yeah, spectacular. Well, maybe I can start with the main, main, main current event of the show. We've done a lot of uh, politics and Trump and in the middle of all of that, um, yeah, we were lucky enough to find Fred Rogers. Some of you might have heard from when you were, if you were a kid, you know, what was the name of the movie? I was like, blanked in my mind. Would Won't you like you to be, be my, my neighbor? neighbor? Won't you be my neighbor? Remember that saying growing up, you know, he was, he was on air for 31 years. And we all of a sudden saw that there's a movie playing in Park City, Won't You Be My Neighbor? And we went. And I got a couple clips, not necessarily from the movie, but... We were just so touched by the love and the dedication of this guy and how he performed his special function to a T that we wanted to use. Oh, there's Helen. I'm going to just keep saying hi to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yeah. Some of you know Mr. Rogers. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Rogers, he was amazing. But, but even, uh, I remember I, I saw a Beatles movie with uh, Frances Zhu because she grew up in Beijing so she didn't really wasn't exposed to the Beatles her whole life and I was remember sitting in the back row watching this uh, Ron Howard film of the Beatles and she just cried the whole way through just feeling the vibe and the love and then I did get a message that uh, she and JP had seen this movie in uh, New York and uh, she cried in that movie because the presence of love was just so strong the gentleness you know, the respectfulness. And there was an ordained minister who decided instead of uh, going a typical ministry route to uh, use the TV airwaves when TV was just invented. And yeah, what a beautiful way. Special function. He really got into his, what Jesus calls his special function of the Holy Spirit using what the ego made. Exactly, because that was what he said. He said he he just saw the television for the first time and the way they were using it with these kids and cartoons yeah. and bopping each other in the head. He said, there must be a better way to use this. What yeah. The made. Yeah. He yeah. Went. He was just coming back from a break from his seminary training. And then he saw the invention of television. It just happened to be at right at that point. And, and he was drawn to it. And, uh, and he had such open minded parents that right in the middle of him, his seminary training, said, but you don't have any experience in television. I mean, it just the medium has just been invented. But he felt it in his heart that the medium wasn't to be used for violence. And, and typical, even the early days of cartoons and slapstick, and you remember the Three Stooges and all the ways that the, the medium has been used. But slapstick, bang, bang down humor is really ego humor. It's not really funny at all. He didn't... He didn't really find uh, television violence funny at all. He thought that was like a tremendous misuse of a, of a very powerful medium. And so, yeah, the clips I think will give a 
a sense of that. But talk about here we are doing a makeshift uh, studio here at the table, the round table. But uh, wow, some of Fred Rogers sets at the beginning with puppets and just poking a hole through a, a wall and bringing a puppet head through it, you know, and it just grew and grew and grew because of the love and the presence behind him and behind his, he just had a love for children and a love for, for all of humanity. And it really came through very much of an inspiration. Maybe we could, I was going to play the other clip. Nicholas, we're going to play the trailer clip first then in line with what we're talking about. Won't you about. be my neighbor? Won't you by na- be my neighbor? So you can go ahead and play it. We can't hear it here. Is that okay? No, that's not okay. Does that mean they're hearing it at least? Nope. You can, hear you. can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Heads are up. Okay. Well, this clip is basically um, the son of Yo Yo Ma, the famous cellist. He made this movie, either produced or directed, I forget. But um, he went on Megyn Kelly with uh, Fred Rogers' wife and just really sharing all the memories of what it was like to be around this guy. So his career lasted 30 years, and we'll share a little bit about that tonight. But, Nicholas, are you ready to give that a try again? We'll see if we get some sound he's working on. Yeah. We'll get some a little more time. Here. More time. We can sing. That's what they would, yeah. he would do in between things. That's how actually he Beautiful the day in the neighborhood. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be mine? Won't you be mine? <laughs> I see some singing along. Kelly, yeah, I see you there. Yeah, we know. There's a few of us that were <laughs> aware of that. Yeah. Well, he went along in, his, in the show, and he actually decided he was going to quit, and he tried to quit, quit, but to try to make shows for the adults. And he had the same love and passion, but he never connected with them in the same way as when he would meet with the children. And I actually see that as a little bit, maybe I could go into the special function yeah, at yeah. the beginning. So today in the reading uh, for the lesson, David did a section reading the special function and there's some quotes I wanted to go into. In this world, eyes become used to darkness and the light of brilliant day seems painful. To the eyes grown long accustomed to the dim effects perceived at twilight. Let him no more be lonely, for the lonely ones are those who see no function in the world for them to fill, no place where they are needed, and no aim which only they can perfectly fulfill. Such is the Holy Spirit's kind perception of specialness, his use of what you made to heal instead of harm. (laughs) (laughs) To each he gives a special function in salvation he alone can fill apart for only him. That's the first part of the quote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's very profound. Because the Course in Miracles is so, so deep, and it's almost like, I always say, it's like a, me- a, a text and a workbook, of, a manual of metaphors, almost like dropping a ladder of what's helpful. Almost like if you were drowning in the ocean and, and somebody threw you a rope and said, just grab hold of the rope uh, wherever you can, or somebody lowered a ladder into a very difficult situation and said, just grab a, any rung, grab anything, grab a... a a side of it, a rung, anything you can, and then we'll go from there. So we have talked a lot, and I've been talking for over 30 years about a term that we call metaphysical ghosting. And this is probably the biggest problem that Course in Miracles teachers and students have, is they, they'll they read a line out of the Course, uh, like uh, from Lesson 132, there is no world. And... Uh, and just use that as a blanket thing to cover over all the mind training that's necessary, all the undoing, all the emptying, all the clearing, all the miracles that are needed. And I've said, you know, if, if it was just so simple as, um, 
not going from the bottom up, but using a top-down approach, which a lot of spiritualities are, uh, a lot of spiritualities just all is one, all is God, amen. Jesus could have just come here and said, I love you all, God is love, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And, and he wouldn't have needed three years of, of public parables and public teachings because he came to show us and demonstrate God's love for us and, and teach us that we were the perfect child of God. But he had to do it from the bottom up. So that's why all the parables, for, for those that have the ears to hear, let them hear. And many, I mean, I've been into thousands of Course in Miracles groups where people would, you know, somebody starts to share an emotional thing, they start to tear up and cry, and it's just people say, just forgive, snap out of it, or, you know, there is no world. You're making a big deal out of that. When you're just getting in touch with emotions, that's just not helpful. And I feel like that's the name of your show, From the Bottom Up, that this, what, Jesus was sharing in the special function was saying that everyone is given a special function. Everyone has a part to play in the awakening. And that part still is an illusion in the sense that all of time and space is an illusion. But you have skills, abilities, you have things that you can do to be kind and gentle and bring that touch of gentleness and love from God through extending through the form so that it's actually felt for yourself and for everyone and that's that's why i think that's so touching is because that's what the special function is about well what what's a question that arises in my mind i'd like to read this and then go into mm -hmm. it. the specialness he chose to hurt himself did god appoint to be the means for his salvation from the very instant that the choice was made his special sin was made his special grace. His special hate became his special love. So I want to use it in this situation because I've said before on this show, I don't understand completely at the depths why this emotion only comes up when I'm in public. And yesterday we were watching this movie and I told you, I felt like Jesus wanted to bring this concept of shame in at some point. So I get all this emotion and it comes up. What is it that I made in terms of the ego made in terms of the specialness aspects of it that's so sinful and hateful that this is part of my special function now. He's, he's transferring it. Like, I don't, something's not totally landing for me. Yeah. Well, I think part of it is that it's the all-inclusive nature. Just like love is all-inclusive and this course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love for that is far beyond what can be taught. It just aims at removing the obstacles that Jesus comes right out in, in A Course in Miracles, and he says the world was made in hate. What's he mean by that? The cosmos was made in hate. Time and space were made in hate. The motive that made the Big Bang, the projection of error, every fabric of everything that's been projected was made in hate. So it's not love that makes the world go down. It actually was hate that generated this world. And some of you are familiar with other great non-dual teachings like Advaita Vedanta. Jesus says some things in the Course that aren't even in ancient Hindu or ancient Chinese non-dualistic teachings. He actually says some things that are, that are emphasizing this aspect of what made the world. He says the world was made as an attack upon God, a place where God can enter not. That is very strong. You're not going to find that in any non-dual teachings. You know, you're going to find teachings that duality is not reality, and we have to remember our oneness and if divinity is one. But basically, the fabric that made all of time and space, the motive behind this world was the ego. God didn't create the world, and God didn't create the body. That's pretty radical. You know, for many of us who were raised in Judeo-Christian, that goes against Genesis. That's the first book in the Bible, you know, and this, this is very deep. But what is important is that the Holy Spirit instantly retranslated that hatred and offered the correction, which is like a giant blessing. So everything that seemed to be an error was corrected in one instant. And when you feel things coming up, like, like a shame, 
it's still like this ontological deep guilt of just a remembrance, even a reverberation of that unholy instant is what he calls mm -hmm. it. That ancient instant of terror is what he calls it. It's still being felt in awareness, mm -hmm. even though it's gone. It's been corrected, it's been answered. But until that atonement or forgiveness, until that solution mm -hmm. is completely accepted, then that reverberation from that original seeming error, the belief in separation, it has to be, it has to be dealt with. It has to be faced. Because it was interesting, because yesterday I had something, so much emotion coming up about a variety of things, and we had a deep talk in, in the car, and I was so grateful. And then uh, Jeffrey and I had to split up from you and Sava, and we got the car, and, and we met up back with you, and it was like even to just fully merge back in, I could see this these thoughts of like, they don't want you here, you got to leave, even though you were texting me so, I was telling Jeffrey, and he was so, oh, look at the gratitude, graciousness, mm -hmm. generosity, you were texting me, and but still there was like, and I just saw that as like the ego trying to keep me away from the love, and it's like the fear of love, and I had to stay so present to, just to be able to merge into the depths yeah, that yeah. being around you is really yeah. about, you know. But this, um, this movie that we saw with Mr. Rogers, you know, I liked it when um, there was this famous, yeah, what's his name? Ma. Yo-Yo Ma. Yo-Yo Ma. It was actually when um, Yo-Yo Ma went on to Mr. Rogers, to that show. And he was going to play the cello, you know, out on Mr. Rogers' show. And Yo-Yo Ma was there, and he was ready. He's, you know, performed probably in front of, with, with symphonies and he's public and everything like this. And yet when he's right there with Mr. Rogers, he said Mr. Rogers kind of leaned over to him and looked him right in the eye, and he was like three inches away. And... And Mr. Rogers was saying, I just, like, I love your <laughs> being. <laughs> and and Yo-Yo Ma just was, like, thinking, I am terrified. He's about ready to try to play on Mr. Rogers' show. And now Mr. Rogers is three inches away saying, I really yeah, lo right. love you. I really love you. I love your being. And he's, he's doing everything he can. And then his son, of course, had to face all this when he's playing with his dad, you know, he had to overcome the fear because, yeah, yeah. you know, we talk about this a lot, but the fear is of love. We're, it's a fear of divine love. It's a fear of an uncomfortableness coming up when there's a real sense of intimacy and closeness. Almost like the ego's like, not that close. Getting way too close here. Need to distract away. Uh, uncomfortable, throw in some other words, distract away, you know, it's a fear of love. And, and for many of us, it was, we were growing up, we were just like that. What does that even mean, fear of love? No, I want love. I want love. When we really find out well, there's a terror there, and there's almost, you could say, more of an attraction to fear and guilt and pain and death that is more attractive in this deceived mind than, than love. Love is not attractive to the deceived mind. It's, it's terrified of divine love. Ultimately, though, it will give way and give in to that love. Well, this is what I'm seeing, like the specific projections that come up. It seems like that's the issue, but but I just feel like I'm seeing more and more, even when I was watching Mr. Rogers, which isn't ready yet. It's ready. I was watching, I just like burst into these tears, which feels more like love, yeah. because that's really what we're called to do is extend just like him. And and it's like, the ego is trying to stop that with everything yeah. That, yeah. that it can. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> it's really amazing. Okay, well, let's play that one, Nicholas. Let's see if we can share it. I want to tell you something. What would you like to do? I like you. I like you, my dear. Yeah. Thank you, very much. And I really, <laughs> I, I love that movie uh, so much because, you know, how we all have our little symbols of 111s and 222s and 1111s. Fred Rogers, he, he loved to swim. He would shine and share his love and his light and then he would go to the swimming pool and just swim laps and laps and then he would always <laughs> go, stand on the scale and he always weighed the same amount for decades the man 
never varied, varied from the same thing. It was 143, it was 143 pounds. And in his mind, the one was I, the four was love, and the three was you. That's what, in his mind, he loved the number 143. That was his weight for decades. And he basically, in his mind, he was always thinking, he would smile when he would weigh himself on the scale and go, 143, I love you. You know, everything, even the numbers. Talk about numerology. It, he was just, he was being used by the Holy Spirit in a special function so that everything was being used to share that love and that gentleness. And even his weight, even his body weight was used to, to share that love. <laughs> I love that. Okay. I love those synchronicities and symbols. We all cried through that movie. <laughs> well, we could... <laughs> oh, maybe we could even use... Before I go into the next one, we could even... You know, <laughs> Let's do this first, because I have two ideas I want to bring up. But maybe, Nicholas, you could play the other one about uh, the Senate subcommittee, because this is Mr. Rogers in action. Basically, what's happened is, is the Senate subcommittee under some president, Nixon, Nixon was going to cut public television. And they've had two days of hearings, and all of these guys from PBS and different companies, whatever, they all get up there and they read these prepared statements, and the senator are tired of them. And so Mr. Rogers is showing up with a 10 minute philosophical statement that he's ready to read. But now remember this, he's the last one to go up and they're about to say no to 20 or $30 million of public funding. And so this is Mr. Rogers meeting with the Senator who doesn't want to be around people and is kind of cantankerous. Yeah. And some of you might know there's a thing in the United States called PBS public broadcasting system, which took off just at the time when Fred Rogers was doing his show, so he was able to do all these shows on public broadcasting, very simple, beautiful shows for people, but it needed government funding, and, and it was part of the, the war on poverty and a lot of things that happened in the 60s, but it's so beautiful because at this point, you know, they're going to cut the funding. They're bombing Vietnam. They're spending millions and millions of dollars on bombs and military, and they're going to cut the $25 million of of an entire public broadcasting, not just his show. And he's called on to, to say, show me that it's got value, you know, $25 million. And th here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so after two days of hearings where it looked like it was going to be a big no, everything turned. <laughs> but that one expression, yeah, it was amazing. Like you at our chemist meeting. <laughs> That's right. We have had some of those moments too. <laughs> A lot of those moments, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd like to use this as a springboard because we just decided yesterday with Jeffrey and the team here to rent a theater, chemist theater, just around the corner, and we are going to start up a studio like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Even more professional. <laughs> Our anyway. props might be a little different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about the puppet. <laughs> but we're, we're a public broadcasting system. We're open to funding sources as well. <laughs> we're gonna, we want to make this television station, you know, using the medium that the ego made to really get the message out there and even take it. I mean, it's wonderful. All these 50 people show up every week, but we're in a creative flow right now to find a way to just make this go big and, and bigger in a way because because <laughs> I feel the love with it. And Mr. Rogers had, he had a point on his show too where, I don't know if we want to go into it, but he had to make a discernment call that who's his audience and a decision, what serves the whole, the whole. And we feel that we've got a new team right now who really feels they want to reach millennials and, and a, a simplified way of doing things. So we're launching that. That's one of our new directions. Yeah, there. yeah, that's inspiring. Because the spirit can use the the words and many, many symbols to really draw people toward the light. And I've seen it in my travels around the world. And it's, it is a nice uh, nice opportunity to use a medium that we know has, as Mr. Rogers knew, that it has a great helpfulness, a great impact, and mm -hmm. use it in a very full way. So it's great to be a part of it. 
Yeah, we we can go over at night and watch our own movies in a, a giant theater. And in the day, use the studio to broadcast, right. broadcast what do you call our pirate signal or something? Yes, or the Matrix. It's the Matrix. our miracle signal. In the Matrix, the Nebuchadnezzar yeah. broadcast the pirate signal, you know, but this is the awakening signal, yeah. Jeffrey wanted to call the theater the Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> so, yeah. And it'll be used for mystery school and all the people come. We'll do like a, you probably can't say it, they <laughs> I don't yeah. want to tell people, <laughs> but we have lots of ideas to use. It. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. It, it's a walk of trust, just like I think with Mr. Rogers, you know, he felt it, he felt a calling, he went for it, and it, it just, it grew and grew and grew and grew, and he, every time there was like even national disasters uh, that the United States had quite a few, whether it was like assassinations or uh, war or uh, even 9-11 with the, the Twin Towers coming down, uh, he was called upon to be a voice of reason, be a voice of calmness, of gentleness. And uh, he had to face his own fears and doubts. I think that came across pretty strong in the movie that when the Twin Towers came down, uh, 9-11, 2001, you know, it, it was a very disheartening moment for him. He, he just thought all those years of extending that love and, and he just had a moment where he just thought, is it worth it? Was it all worth it? And of course, his mighty companions, we have all mighty companions all around, they said to him, what do you mean? What, are you kidding? You know, you, you are, are, are a light. We need your love. We need your stability. This is, we need you in this time more than ever. But uh, he, he went through his own facing of the fears and the doubts just so he could come back to that truth in, inside of himself and inside of all of us. So, you know, it's been inspirational. We've had our journeys and we've had to face things that come up, but we're all walking hand in hand, arm in arm to the light now. We have great support and amazing symbols, use of symbols. Uh, it's just to me, it, I watch the use of symbols that we're even using now with Facebook Live or Zoom and websites and YouTube and Spreaker and all kinds of things. You know, it's like a giant symphony of love that's going out saying love is real, love is true, love is our divine nature. Let's celebrate that and let's stay in the joy of that truth and not be uh, cast aside. By, by doubts, we, we have to stay with it. Yeah, he, he needed help because he was giving and giving and then he seemed to tank, like you said, and then they said, we need you, and then he just rose up. You can see the message on yeah. YouTube now. So. Yeah, it's amazing. He stepped right in there. When there was a call, when there was a need, he stepped right up. The other thing from the special function is, I wanted to read, is the Holy Spirit... There's two ideas here. The Holy Spirit needs your special function that his may be fulfilled. Think not you lack a special value here. Now the course goes over and over that you're, the problem is you think you're special, yeah. right? Yeah. So he's kind of retranslating that word here for the, the Spirit's purpose. While in time, there is still much to do and each must do what's allotted him for on his part does all the plan depend. He has a special part in time for so he chose and choosing it, he made it for himself. And then forgiveness is the only function meaningful in time. It is the means the Holy Spirit uses to translate specialness from sin into salvation. So the two things I want to go into here is, it's, he's obviously talking about a very specific thing in form as your special function, but he still keeps saying forgiveness is the only function. So can you talk about that? How do you bring them together? And also then for, for us in the community, we have so much support that on a daily basis, we're, we're lining up with what is our special function on a daily basis. What could you say to people once you've answered that? How could they at their home, what would be the best thing they could do to find their special function if they haven't found it? Yeah. Well, I think the, the key is, because when people read the metaphysics of the Course and they go, wait a minute, if it's all an illusion, why would I need to put so much effort into anything. Uh, and Jesus does say that when your mind is 
is addicted, when you're addicted to ego thinking, it will take an, an effort to turn things around to be into spiritual alignment. So the short answer is it's all guidance. I mean, I look on, I look around the room here, I look at the devoted ones where we've just listened and prayed, followed guidance. I see Helena there, uh, Helena Hunison in all the years. It's, it's actually guidance in the moment is where the, the special function comes in. It's just given by the Spirit moment by moment. You can't really think of it in terms of time, because as soon as you start to think of it in terms of, of time and forms, you know, you get into this issue of making the error real by thinking that there's certain things in form that are more important than other things, when what's important is listen and follow. That's the pathway of A Course in Miracles. So all of the devotion that we've had and everything that emanates from our hearts, all this love that's emanating is just coming from listen and follow. It's that simple. It's, it's not where you try to pre-plan things, pre-arrange things. It's what Kirsten was talking about on the show this morning, that when the, the, the fire was growing in, in enormity and it was heading for the canyon and it actually started coming right up our canyon, you know, right specifically up our canyon. And and then that's the time of just being in prayer and saying, what would you have me do? What would you have me say? And Kirsten shared, she prayed and, and heard clean, clean the cabin, you know, very clearly and specifically. But that wasn't clean the cabin for just for the monastery or for the cabin. That was for the whole universe because everything that's given to us by the Holy Spirit even in terms of specific guidance, it radiates out for the whole universe. Our mind, in a quantum way, everything is connected. So there is nothing that's too small or too large. Everything that comes from following that guidance, you could literally say you are doing for the whole universe. And some of you remember that from the Course. Everything I think and say and do teaches the whole universe. That, to the ego mind, it's like, that's ridiculous. Everything I think and say and do teaches the whole universe. It's like, it seems the most absurd. The ego's like, oh, come on. You sound like you think you're important. And, and the Holy Spirit's saying, yeah, you are important. You're the holy child of God. And when you think thoughts, those are for the whole universe. Some of you have heard me say that for years. If you want a Snickers bar, the whole universe wants a Snickers bar. <laughs> and when you want to remember God, the whole universe remembers God. Because it's a perceptual hallucination. When you accept the correction, legions upon legions arise with you because the mind is that powerful. So I, you start to see from this how, how important this is. This is, a, this is what it means to be the savior of the world, not a personal savior but a savior in the mind by releasing judgments, by releasing the separation. That, that's how the whole world is healed, just through that change of, of mind, change of purpose. So as we're moving along, we, we hear a guidance and we follow. Like yesterday, I thought to get a certain kind of cream after the surgery. And I, <laughs> and I the cream for the whole universe. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I went and I got it and then I, I got out of the store and I was a little tight and I thought, oh, maybe because Kirsten had told me something else for Monday and I thought, oh, maybe that's not it. And then I went into prayer and I just, I heard, no, no, just relax. It's, you just kind of got a little lost in the store itself and it's, don't, let's not put it on specifics. I had you kind of in my mind. Yeah, that sounds good, Jason. Just go. <laughs> but then I came home and it seemed to be I got incredibly itchy from the use of the cream. And I, and I, I'm not even sure that I attributed mm -hmm. that cause. So how do I how do I look at that now? Because it seems like I'm I'm associating false cause and effect. But Jesus was saying, no, no, don't worry so much about that. Just just kind of go deeper in your mind. But I, there's so much importance on still getting that form right and wrong and I don't even know if you can feel my question underneath. Yeah. This is, yeah. How do you well, still keep you know, I think what you're pointing to is the power of prayer. Like 
people can say whatever they want about about religion and philosophy and government and all the different aspects of a projected world. But but I remember growing up and and it was the, the line, the family that prays together stays together, which could be interpreted that when you pray sincerely to join with the spirit, you know the wholeness of your mind. You know that all minds are included with your mind. In you being aligned with spirit, everything in the world is aligned. It's very quantum. It's not like there's a Jason trying to get it right and then there's billions of others out there. It's more like you're practicing the prayer. What would you have me do? Where would you have me go? You're, you're practicing that prayer and realizing that everything that you think is for the whole universe. So even for something like a cream, you know, it's a, it's a practice. And then we learn through our experiences. In other words, the ego mind is an experience of separation, but we learn through listening and following and guided uh, instructions. We become more and more, almost like that GPS, we come closer and closer to our, our home, onto the homing beacon through the practice. So, you know, you would start with maybe, you know, you feel some itch, you feel itchy. Or like Kirsten years ago, I feel hot in the car on the, the tarmac. And then it's itch thoughts or hot thoughts. You see, that's a huge stride just to bring it back. I can be hurt only by my thoughts. I can be irritated only by my thoughts. I can be hot only from my thoughts. I can be itchy only from my thoughts. You see, that's a huge movement inward towards salvation when you start to just have the realization that any discomfort, any upset that I feel is only because of thoughts. So the error was right there thinking it was the cream at all. That's the yeah. The problem is always false causation, projecting the causation to the world, because as soon as the mind has done that, then it takes responsibility. That's the inroads to guilt. That's the inroads to shame. It's just faulty responsibility, putting responsibility where as there is. That's where the mistake was. Yeah, as if wow. that's where the mistake was. So Jesus is, is more like, almost like a, a mother or a father with a, with a little toddler who's just, we'll say, just crawling around. And then when the toddler finally stands up for the, to take the first steps, and then oftentimes falls down, the parents there like, oh, to, to lift them up, to love them. The emphasis is never on the fall, ever on the mistake. It's always on the, the movement towards true causation, the movement towards true innocence and true love. And that's how loving God is and how loving the Holy Spirit is. It's always emphasizing our movement toward the correction, our movement in that direction. And, and like you might say, millions of angels, so to speak, cheering us on with every movement we, we make in that direction. And no, no punishment, no harsh consequences, nothing that, that is coming from God that has anything to do with punishment or consequences. It's just we do get the consequences of our thoughts. And if they're egoic thoughts, it's upsetting. And if they're loving thoughts aligned with the Holy Spirit, it's very peaceful, very loving, very joyful. So it wasn't. It was Jesus. I didn't have to return the cream or anything. Yeah, it was just <laughs> for that. It was just for that. That's the pressure. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. Years ago, we had a a friend from Sweden, Alex from Ballantuna, who had come to a, a retreat uh, in Pennsylvania. That was the yeah. one, and then. He was a staunch vegetarian. Uh, vegetarian, and then he was there with us for days. We went through all this, and then on his way back to Sweden, he stopped at a, like a big airport, I don't know if it was New York or Boston, and he was just in touch with guidance for the first time. He could feel the presence guiding him in this airport. After spending a whole retreat with us, he was so thrilled. He was like in the airport, and he was just like, oh my gosh, I can feel it. I can feel the presence, and then the presence said, you know, let's, you can go have some food and guided him over to this Italian restaurant in the airport. And then he went through and then he was guided to order a, a piece of uh, pizza with like sausage or pepperoni on it. And, and then 
the Holy Spirit had him pick up the, the sausage and lick the sausage and smell the sausage. And it was just the most spectacular. When he was describing it, it was like a, an undoing of the vegetarian concept very gently and very slowly. Not like he was forced. But he was so thrilled when he was telling me the story is that I could, could feel the guidance. I could feel the instructions. Oh, it was the most amazing experience because I was making contact with the Spirit. And that's what his prayer was, you know, through the whole thing of coming over here all the way from Sweden was just to make contact with the Spirit. So that's everything. And that's why all the mind training that you do is only for that one thing, to make contact with that internal teacher. That's all it's for. And the Spirit doesn't care about the form of things. The Spirit will never say, oh, tisk tisk and oh, this mistake and that mistake. It's really an emphasis on the mind training and the attentiveness, and that you're worth it. Underneath, you are worth the mind training. You know, at one point he says, beware of the shabby ego belief that neither you or anyone else is worth consistent effort. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I, it's in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but like yesterday in the car, you said to me, when I was... Uh, <laughs> I was saying, when am I going to get a room? I don't have to unpack every time I move different places. And he said, well, first you said, when you're 60. And I was like, <laughs> you have it now and you're 60 or whatever. And I, I, mean, I don't have my own room. People use my room right, right. when I'm gone. <laughs> I knew you were kind of joking. But, but it was a deeper thing. And then I said, but I've traveled a lot. And, yeah, but you, you've, you've only done 5 or 10% of your life's purpose and you we had that beautiful quantum reading where you mm -hmm. you've completed your life purpose 100 percent. and it's just coming up to me now like when you're talking about you're worthy of mind training how do <laughs> this is why i can't remember how do i look at this because i know there's something inspiring in that you've only completed <laughs> five or ten percent and it's like i hear humbleness or something but but most of the time through the ego that's like depressing and <laughs> It doesn't like five doesn't, or ten. Yeah, just like, come <laughs> yeah, on, ten, yeah, more like eighty yeah, or and ninety. You know, because I feel I tried so hard, and I, oops. just put so much effort into it, or whatever, and it's like, Jesus, five or ten percent. Like, I'm not going to be able to do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's this thing of like, nobody, if they went on the spiritual journey, if they could if they were given what the future would look like, nobody would go there because it, it seems to involve so much undoing and so much dismantling. And I try to tell people, just give them a little snapshot and be realistic that when I first got the course and I popped it open, the first thing I popped open to was the manual for teachers. And I started reading it. And then it said, you have to go through these stages of development of trust. And I said, great. And I was brand new, really green, wet behind the ears, and I'm like, Jesus, tell me, what are the stages of development of trust? And then I read, oh, oh. And I mean, I, I remember the first time I read it, and I got to the end, and I said, well, there's six stages in here, and four of them are challenging and difficult. That's two-thirds of the journey <laughs> is challenging and difficult. I was kind of like, well, I guess okay then. You know, I mean, I, I just accepted it. You know, he was basically saying two-thirds of the journey is going to be dark. And, and I thought, okay. And then he says other places, you have to go through the darkness to the light. You know, so I said, okay. But, but what's the alternative, you know, if, you, if you're going to go for eternity? <laughs> and it's almost like going to a dentist. And, well, we need to, you've got an abscess tooth over here. And you need two root canals over there. And you need some gum operations and this and this. What are you going to do? Okay. Go for it, you know, I mean, you know, whatever it is, it's like whatever it takes, you got to go for it. And that's the thing that I think is about it. I feel like the part in the Bible where it said, to much is, is, who is given, much will be asked. To much to whom is given, much will be asked. And, and that's, I remember reading that in the red letters that Jesus was sharing that. And I didn't know what he meant initially, but... I know that it's like when you jump down the rabbit hole, you have to be willing to just go to the bottom of the rabbit hole, regardless of 
whatever will seem to come. Because it's for eternity, because it's for eternal life, because it's to know yourself as one with God, because that's the most important thing. And so there's nobody really judging the beginning of the journey or the, or the end. This undoing of pride, undoing of preferences, Comparison. comparisons, undoing of, of everything. Because that's what I think. Nobody else, the other elders aren't crying on public TV. And, <laughs> and like, does this mean I'm below or ahead of them? I can't tell. It's like, normally I think below, but it, either way I feel terrible. Like trying to figure yeah, out. That's where, where course, students even read that in there and say, which, which level am I am at? You know, they try to do that, but it's... Jesus is not putting that in there to, to try to figure out where you are in time and space because he said God's son is no traveler in time and space. It's, there's, there's no answer to those questions. Now I'm feeling the shame. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my... <laughs> Your shame is really up. Right, now here we go into the, the shame part of the show. <laughs> well, I think the last thing on my mind before we could do the last clip from Rogers is, is this all feeling good? Great. I'm going to tell you last night. <laughs> is um, like with, with this new direction, we've got this massive Spiri direction with like our hopefully an integrated website and reaching millennials, which will eventually bring everybody in and the studio and uh, eventually Miracles Academy, like a new online school. And, and it's so massive, and there's like this watching some of the elder, other elders kind of go into mysticism. And, um, and, it's, and there's like a part of me that's like, okay, 10 or 15 years I've been doing this. Do I even have the energy for another run or push? But, <laughs> <laughs> but there's something that is definitely there and excited yeah. about it all. Yeah. But I, it's like, how do I fully go for this without a push? And, and then when I do go for it, there's some kind of like, look, you see, it's really hard. Like after that seven hours of phone calls and saw this day was, you know, I wrote a song and I'm like, why can't I just write a song? That's my, that's my journey. Like, why? Why? Tell me something that's helpful. About yeah, you've been asking this for a while. Like, am I such a tough nut? Right. Okay. <laughs> to crack that the Holy Spirit's got to crack me on all these different sides. And I look around and I feel these la, 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 la. <laughs> but, you know, I, I feel like it's, it's that thing. is not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. It's not, you know, it, it's like the Course says, it cannot be difficult to do the task that Christ appointed you to do, for it is he who does it. It's all right there in that one sentence. In other words, the whole undoing, even when we talk about projects or we talk about academies or we talk about studios or all these things, you know, you, it's like that Mr. Rogers playfulness, you know. I do remember in that movie that um, it, after he'd been doing it for decades, somebody interviewed him and said, what's the difference between you now and oh, when yeah. you did that yeah. first show, like expecting him to say, what have you learned? What have you learned? You've grown so far and everything. And he says, I don't, I don't feel that. He didn't feel that at all. He had a word for it. He was almost like he couldn't even fathom yeah. that there was a different Mr. Rogers decades ago than there was there because the love was the same. Yeah. He felt the same love with all the people, with the children, with the cast, with everybody in the studio way back in Pittsburgh as he felt with whatever national audiences and doing all these things and speaking publicly in front of people. It was the same. And that's, I think, the simplicity of salvation. It's just this moment. All we're doing is coming to relax into the presence of this moment. And there's nothing more. There's nothing more required of us. And we're not asked to find salvation in some kind of an intellectual way. We're not asked to build a resume and go to God and say, Did I, is this good enough? Is it a good enough resume to get in? The Spirit's not interested in the resume. Do you feel happiness right now? Do you feel joy right now? Do you feel love right now? That's the answer to everything. You don't have to like try to prove your worthiness to God, because God 
knows that, that you are worthy just because of your creation. Nothing you think or say or do or make is required for you to know heaven. It's just that presence of love. So I feel like that's what our whole ministry is about. And, you know, we actually did have that presence of if there was a fire, if things are there, if things burn down, if things are this way, if things are that way. We've had a lot of experiences over the years where we were like, oh, well, <laughs> you know, where we just had to go, oh, well, and just, and just watch it. Uh, there was no sense of trying to control outcomes or make the world a better place. It was more just that state of mind. Because that's what I see it is like there's still this responsibility and through the doing it flushes that up and I've got to find the space of Christ that does it through me. So it's needed to find that space rather than the punishment. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what you, if punishment is the alternative, it's yeah, yeah. better to be relax and be in the joy. Yeah. That's just an old idea, this punishment idea. Yeah. There's no punishment. Okay. Well, we've got one more clip from Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Oh, this you. is um, Mr. Rogers. He's basically a couple of years before he died, I think. He's accepting an, an acceptance. He's doing an acceptance speech at the Emmys for... I don't know, a Life, Lifetime Achievement Award of the 24th Daytime Emmy Awards. And I just still, at the very end, probably 20 years after his show's ended, I just thought we could play this for the presence. And also he invites us into something that we yeah. can all join in. Yeah, so. yeah. See, so you, you could, any thoughts there? Yeah, that's great. You could play that, that Nicholas. <laughs> he still uses time to for silence and not big names of thank you, just for everyone to be in the yeah, presence. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It just shows you that that it's it, that our special function and our pl part in, in the awakening is not under personal control. You know, he goes off to the seminary. He goes off to train to be a minister. And he's in the middle of his minister training. He's coming home to visit his parents. And they go, look at this new contraption. It's a television. And he sits there and watches it. And his whole ministry, his whole special function comes out of a feeling deep inside himself of what he wants to do with this new medium. And then decades later, he's just there saying, may God be with you. He's there reminding people of all the blessed ones that have been with us, all the, the, the way the Spirit's been able to reach us. And, and it's kind of exciting because it's exciting, first of all, to think that nothing of the past, nothing of your life in this world in the past can, can take you fully into God. It takes the willingness to let it all be used. And also that you're not bound by the past, that this day, this moment can be the, the rebirth the, the re-confirmation uh, of your willingness to serve the Spirit and serve all your brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and let the future be however it is. Mm -hmm. And the best thing is, is when you feel that love, it doesn't really matter what they do. You know, we could, we could start this new direction and the Miracles Academy could fall flat and the theater could burn down. I think it's already burned down once here in Camus, uh years ago, but, or things can go what the world would judge as wrong, but it doesn't change the love. Nothing can change the love. And that brings a relaxation in there, like, oh, I can do this. I'll just take it one moment at a time, and I don't have to have any fear of, nobody's judging me and how it's going to look or where this is going to go in form. I can have some fun with this. I can have some joy with this. I can let the love inside of me be activated in wondrous, miraculous ways, and never do I have to try to evaluate or judge anything in form. What a freedom. What a freedom to, to love and live. Yeah, that's it. Use the cream. <laughs> use it all. <laughs> use it, don't use it. <laughs> Just get on. Right. Use the cream, don't use the cream. Get on with it. Get on with your joy. Yeah. 
That's good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I feel like that's a good place to end today's show. <laughs> if anybody wants to come wave goodbye, we can, we can wave from here. We invite the studio, the studio audience to come in. Bring your blankets and your pillows. <laughs> Bring your Kleenex. <laughs> Bring your tissues. <laughs> I think you'd like Fred Rogers. <laughs> Patrick. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Another dog. Day in the neighborhood. <laughs> Andrew. Oh, how Jackson. Too. Oh. So sweet. Yeah. Oh, look, there's the monastery. There's all the berries. Oh, my God. There's the berries. This is Ricky, awesome. Emily, Andy, and the berries. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi, Stephen. Stephen. Beautiful. Hi, Mary Strong. Oh, oh, Christopher. Christopher. Oh, Mary's going to be a berry Tuesday. <laughs> She's on her way. <laughs> <laughs> and from Sweden, we see the puppy dog. Oh, there. Ellen there. and Bridget. Ellen and Bridget. Oh. And the, oh. John's playing the guitar. <laughs> John, yeah. John's playing the song for us. You can still come and cook. Oh, There's still too. a brie, John. There's still an opening. <laughs> There's still an opening. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Show up any time. Oh. Carly, Carly. This is my favorite part. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just see the show. Rich. 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 Hey, Rich. Oh. Hey, Julia. 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 Sorry. Julia. Oh, no. From Denmark. Oh, wow. Mary. Oh. Ellen Virtual, Mexico. Ellen Virtual. <laughs> there they are. Our Mexico crew <laughs> reclining in. The studio. <laughs> Please enjoying your chair. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see. I see. Thank oh, you, everybody. Kelly, Laura. Yeah. Frank, Frank, Emma. Julie. Emma. Hi, Emma. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> I love it. See you soon. <laughs>